Hi, it's Andrew uh, from Cocktails in the City, and today we're going to talk about the shrub. Uh, the shrub is something that I've seen a lot with all the bars around the country recently. It's a very, very popular cocktail ingredient, and so who better to talk about that than uh, Dave from the Shrub and Shutter. Hi, Dave, are you okay? Hello, yeah, I'm fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, good, thank you. So Dave is a, a very talented man. He's a bar owner, consultant, uh, drinks author. Uh, would you like to just introduce yourself quickly, please? Yeah, sure. I'm one, one half of um, a consultancy company called Salt to the Earth. My friend and myself, business partner Chris, we uh, started up a drinks consultancy maybe about seven years ago, um, just focusing on giving a bit of drinks design, menu development, um, and kind of showcasing what we do. Um, we uh, started up basically doing that before we got a bar. Very, very quickly after that, we uh, decided that uh, bar was the best thing to have as a base, so we uh, decided to look around South London, where we're both from. Um, we uh, decided to open up a bar called the Shrub and Shutter, which is what's going to be our main focal point today, talking about shrubs. Um, and then very quickly after that, we opened up another South London bar called the First Aid Box. So as it stands, we've got two bars in South London and we do some drinks consultancy. Yeah, and your book is called uh, Doctor's Orders, isn't it? Have you got a copy there? Really so you can see? Luckily, got one at home. Um, yeah. It's called Doctor's Orders. So, uh, over 50 invented cocktails to cure, revive, and enliven. So, drinks in there for the kind of humble early cocktail maker, someone who's a beginner, or um, something a bit more extravagant, or some drinks recipes in there for bartenders and friends alike to try about something a little bit more exciting in their life. Yeah. A great hang yeah, in there too. about your, your drinks, is they're always fun and really yeah. well presented as well. And um, looking through that book, it does seem there's a lot there for people to create at home. And obviously at the minute, you know, creating cocktails at home is a, you know, a popular thing to do. And yeah, so hopefully... To any bar at the moment is trying to make something at home. So yeah, there's, there's a, that's what we kind of set out to do at the very beginning was, was to have some great drinks that you can make at home or throw to have parties, you know, friends over, just to have a bit more of a wow statement um, and supposed to look like you've done a little bit more homework for your guests. Um, but yeah, like you said, there's lots of exciting drinks on there. Some ones that pair well with food, some ones that have food with them in the pictures. Um, and yeah, and just a, a nice read for people to have either on their coffee table or, or to get inspiration for cooking or, or, or likewise with the drinking. Yeah. yeah. So first things first then, uh, what is a shrub? So a shrub, um, it dates back, uh, it was a way of preserving uh, drinks um, back in the day. I think it was preserving spirits that back, back in the early 1900s, they obviously didn't have as long a shelf life as they do now. So I think it was from Harry Craddock in the Savoy cocktail book. He talks about making a shrub with um, old um, like brandy or cognac that's going off. So he preserves it um, and adds some vinegar to make it a longer shelf life. Um, but that was kind of one way it was looked at. More, more commonly now it's used as a as a flavour additive to extract flavour out of either a fruit, vegetable, seed, nut, um, a herb, you know, uh, it's something that is a pickling agent that will actually extract the flavour out of the ingredient that is, um, that is in it to kind of make that a, a drinking vinegar to add to cocktails to give a bit more depth and flavour than your normal kind of citrus or sweet and sour combinations that you read quite a lot about. Yeah. So shrubs are a sort of preservative pickling agent that adds an extra level of flavour to a mixed drink. Yeah, you exactly. You the word vinegar there as well. Yeah, so vinegar, you know, you can use different types of vinegars, also white balsamics, um, more cider vinegar, white wine vinegar, just to get a different level, like direction of flavour. Um, but yeah, the, the main focus on that is to add something a little bit more exciting, you know, even if it's just a, a twist on a dirty martini, adding a slight, you know, infused pickle. Um, can uh, like alleviate or make a kind of different Gibson. So, yes, yeah, it's it's, it's a, a a very easy thing that can, that's got a long shelf life that can kind of change a gin and tonic to a martini to a, a cocktail that you're going to create at home. Great. Okay. So I'm um, obviously we're both in our respective kitchens. Yeah. Um, one of the things I understood about shrubs is it's a great way to preserve things that might be on the way out. And yeah. uh, if you're like me and you panic bought thousands of toilet rolls. <laughs> Didn't do that, I'm joking. But uh, no, you stuck well, your fridge full of fresh fruit and it's starting to go off. Um, this is a great way to, you know, prevent, prevent any waste. Um, just before this call, I went into my fridge, which is a bit bare at the minute, but I had like sort of 
a cucumber that was looking a bit a bit manky so i wonder if you had any ideas for a cucumber and then um we did talk yesterday and you said that <clears throat> obviously your cocktails at home maybe getting some stuff out of the garden so you asked me what herbs and flavors i had in the garden and i found some some rosemary so i've got uh cucumber that's going on the way out and i've got some rosemary so what drinks can we do with these two things so we can do a uh, a lovely twist on a daiquiri a daiquiri at the moment is one of those drinks that in the bar industry it seems to be uh, a very quick drinkable energizing drink that they're having um it's been quite popular lately in the trade um so we're going to try something like a nice fresh cucumber daiquiri as the sun's out today um so using our cucumbers preserving a bit of that cucumber that's made be a little bit wilted or, or dried out that can be put in the shrub and then the rest of it muddled and then shaken with lime and a little bit of shrub some sugar and, and some some rum great okay so he mentioned to me the other day about uh, what was a good thing to do is to make like a a mother shrub which is a great name mother shrub yeah uh, so you like we have your mother with your your sourdough recipes and uh, things like that you can make a stock shrub or a mother shrub that you can add add to or you know make a really exciting flavor that then you can decant and then allocate towards you know herbs or fruits or vegetables instead of having to make it individually or having too much excess shrub lying around it's quite a nice way of adding little bits and trying some flavors out or things that are going off in your fridge of, of preserving it at that time great okay so um do you want to sort of talk i've got, I've got a few bits and bobs here um as i understand that you're happy you're happy to sort of talk me through and do and yourself sort of create that sort of mother shrub or base shrub and then make those drinks so should we yeah. start with the mother shrub yeah so starting off it's a, quite a simple recipe um well we we go off you can make it a little bit more complex depending on your flavor but we usually go equal parts with sugar water and white wine vinegar but what we're going to do first we're going to put the sugar and the, and the water together so we're going to boil the kettle um or heat some water up on the stove um, and dissolve the sugar into the water. So the best thing, I mean, if we don't want to make too much, but maybe 250 grams um, to 250 milliliters of water. And then when you yeah. combine that all together, oh, look, it's yeah. already on it. Uh, so and then we, doing that, and I mentioned to you, it's looking a bit cloudy and a bit, and you, you said that might be the case and it'll just, it just takes time to fully dissolve in. Is that it right? It takes a little bit of time because obviously when the, the hot water hits the sugar, it's going to dissolve the top layer and then the bottom needs a bit of work. So sometimes you can have like either whisk it through with a whisk or um, there's another little trick if it does crystallize like that, a little squeeze of lemon juice just kind of dissolves it a little bit quicker as well. If you okay. need to. Yeah, it's but, starting to dissolve now, so. Yeah, it just needs a bit of work through and make sure it's all, if you go a little vigorous couple of circles, it should, um, should hopefully. Yeah, and that's just equal parts. So 200 mils, 200 grams, hot yeah, water. I feel that you don't, you, there are two other, there's another way, there's like that's one to one is equal parts. So how much, if you buy a kilogram of sugar in the shops, a litre of water, it's really straightforward. Um, but there are ways, if you want to have a stronger stock syrup, you can do two parts, so two kilos to one litre of water. But I find this is the best, and when you shake it, kind of opens up. If you've got a little bit of water in, the dilution actually helps sometimes when you're having the cocktails. Great. And for stupid people like me, one to one is like, you know, probably the best. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. One it's, one. it's less bulletproof and probably less less sticky and gonna go everywhere. But yeah, so yes, so that's, that's perfect. And then we're gonna wanna add two hundred and fifty ml of white wine vinegar. If you don't have white wine vinegar at home, use cider vinegar. Um, cider vinegar, vinegar, yeah. That's perfect. I've got white wine vinegar here, no brands in place, but yeah, we've um Either of those work really well. Posh, mine, mine's Aspel. Very, very nice. yeah. Aspel is my favourite cider. Anyway, so. Yeah. Um, yeah, so if you've got one, you know, or if you don't have loads at home, combine them together if you've got both of them. But just try and stay away from something like Sarsons. You don't want malt vinegar because it's going to taste really, really. Okay. But yeah, if you oh, go to London, my wife's going to kill me when she comes home and I've poured away all the best cider <laughs> vinegar. Well, yeah, nice. And then 250 ml up there. That right, so 350 ml bottle. So oh. that's all in there now. Nice, yeah. So just give that a stir, and then obviously with that you've got probably about just under 750 ml, or maybe a bit more actually. Yeah, it's seven. It's yeah, 700 at the minute. Nice. So that's that's a great start, and obviously when you've got your hot sugar syrup, so you made that a little a few minutes ago. You want it to cool, obviously, just naturally, um, but you can put your ingredients in. Then um, the only concern when you put in 
herbs with like a hot syrup, is they're going to go a little bit brown. So if you're going to be adding herbs in, wait till the solution's cooled down. But if you're putting in cucumber or like some going off berries or something in the fridge or an apple, you can chuck it in when it's kind of lukewarm like that. Okay, so that's a top tip. Let the, uh, yeah, let the solution yeah, cool. Just otherwise, okay. your mixture will go brown with if you were to put mint or, or rosemary or anything from the garden in. You okay. want to keep the vibrancy in and extract the colour a little bit and be a nice green colour. Great. All right, so what do we do now? I've got the mother shrub looking good. So, uh, mother, so we're, we're going to do two different shrubs today. Um, the first one we're going to do is cucumber. Yeah. So we want to just dice up some of the cucumber just into quarters. So if you're going to be cutting cut the cucumber down down the middle and into quarters and then just chop kind of quite roughly as long as they fit you know small enough so it fits in your jar or jam jar at home to kill the jar yeah i've got a couple of empty uh, empty jam jars here amazing yeah they'll, they'll work perfectly obviously very easy to store in the fridge um that is the best place for them to be kept if you don't have any fridge space they can be kept at room temperature they just have a shorter shelf life but the shelf yeah. life is and once you've made these, do they sit, how do you talk about shelf life? Because I understand one of the things is like it's a preservative. How long will it last for? So with, with this mixture, there, there's a few different things with, with the shrubs you can do. Is with this mixture, if you're going to be wanting to extract loads of flavour out, um, you can leave them in for two weeks, uh, the, the ingredients. But if you want a slightly lighter flavour pickle um, and not being too herbaceous, say with lavender or, or rosemary or thyme or whatever from your garden, take it out a little bit earlier, maybe just do, do two or three days. Um, and then you're going to have a nice balanced flavour. But you more, more than easy just to, to taste it as you're going and just make sure that there's no air getting in or, or anything like okay. that. Okay. So I've got to put some cucumber in a jam jar. Perfect. Um, and then, I mean, I've, I've used a few different things that have been in my spice cupboard. I'm currently self isolating down at my sister's house, but um, they, they've yeah. got a spice cover, so I'll put some fennel seed in with the rosemary one, and then with the cucumber, I'll put a little bit of mustard seed and coriander seed. That is quite okay. a nice idea. I think a lot of times chefs use that when they're doing a light pickle, they add a little bit of that to give a bit more flavor and a bit more depth. Um, but you know, it, that's just, if you have it, if you've always wondered what that stuff in the back of your spice cupboard is, then you can get out and see if you're yeah. with it. But if not, then, then you can just go, just nice fresh cucumber. If you've got some mint in, in your fridge, chuck that in as well. That, those work flavors work really nice together. But we're just gonna go nice straightforward cucumber. Um, like I said, a few, few mustard seeds in that will work nicely. Yeah. Pour the liquid over, so that will start to work straight away and extract the flavor. Um, obviously, there's a lot of water in cucumbers, so it kind of works in your favour. So, yeah, pour it straight up to the top and then um, just put the lid on. Making a right mess, it's all <laughs> it's going everywhere. <laughs> all right. um, okay, so yeah, I poured that over. Uh, probably poured about 200, about 200 mils there was space for. Perfect, yeah. So, I mean, if you've got more than, more than two, if you're going to do a few different shrubs, like you say, if you just do that easy amount of liquid and, and sugar and vinegar you've got maybe three different jars you could do just there and then um, with whatever you have but that looks perfect and that yeah. will just, over time just get de develop much more flavor yeah so if i had like a 200 ml jar um rough, how much would i be putting in most cocktails 50 mils a bit more oh no just uh, about 10 to 15 mils so there's oh. a lot of cocktail use out of it it depends on your kind of love of vinegar or or, or what yeah, so you make quite a few drinks, and it's obviously a nice little something different that you can put in your cocktails. And also, with a, a slight uh, aside to that, if you aren't drinking it, it's very good to have either just in soft drinks or just to have a little shot of in the morning to get your digestive system going. Yeah, 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 you mentioned that it's like good for the digestive system, is that right? Yeah, I mean, you have proper like. Um, like cider vinegar that you have, you dilute with water, and, and it's um, that's that's the the best one. But this is a nice form of it, and it's actually less, uh, it's more pleasant. It's less unpleasant because that stuff in the morning is tough. It's very very strong. Um, I used to try and do it um, to get my diet going, but yeah, the the, the concentrated cider vinegar that they do with the water is is pretty intense. So this one's a slightly nicer um, okay. treat. So, are there any of them like health benefits with a shrub? Yeah, sure. I mean, you, you don't necessarily have to have it with alcohol. It's quite a nice thing to have uh, if you're just going to drink a tonic water or, or a soda. Um, it's a nice additive. It's going to, like we said, it's, it's going to, you know, bring a bit more depth and flavour to it. Um, vinegar is also, you know, one of the things that kind of works really well 
um, with this shrub element with, with the cocktails is, is very good for digestion. So people, it's quite common for people to have a little shot of either side of vinegar or, or, or vinegar in the morning to get their like, metabolism started and their digestive system started. So you can have a little shot of this in the morning. It'd probably be a bit more pleasant than the normal intense side of vinegar one. So yeah, it's got, got a few different benefits to have. It doesn't need to be just all cocktails. So. Great, okay. Okay, so we've got the cucumber, cucumber shrub going. Yeah, um, and then, then we might as well make the rosemary one as well. Have you picked that lovely rosemary? Yeah. Rosemary here from the garden as well. You need to, do you need to take the um, do you need to take the things off the stalk or I, mean, I would just I would just say if you cut them outside just give them a wash obviously but I think keeping them on the stalks nice stalks have always got a bit more flavour um, a bit more earthiness to them okay and obviously easier to get out as well when you want to uh, use the liquid yeah so I'll give it a quick wash Quick wash, and then um, the same as the other one. If you have any other slices, I put a bit of fennel seed with mine because it goes quite nice um, with that. But um, yeah, if you don't have any, then rosemary will work perfectly. And just pour that that stock liquid over as you as you've put down the cucumber already. This one's stock syrup probably uh, it's probably cooled down a little bit. The stock shrub. So yeah, yeah, right. yeah, yeah it's cool, man. It's gonna look great. Other things as well, just aesthetically, they look great. If you do have a, a bigger jar or a kiln a jar and stuff, they look great on show as well. You know, I said you can get them in the fridge, but they do have a, a shelf life if they're not refrigerated. So there's some, something that looks a little bit more like a, like a doctor's lab with some strange ingredients in it. Um, yeah. yeah. You know, we said about our bar when they first came in, that we had all these different kiln jars everywhere and people said it looks a bit like a doctor's laboratory, like but in your friend's kitchen. So, uh, yeah. Well, that's what I was thinking, like, you know, when the day comes when you can have guests around again, uh, if you can make a cocktail, like a cocktail, but one of those ingredients or something that you've prepared yourself, like the shrub yeah. element, I think that's a really nice way to impress, impress guests in a fairly easy way. Yeah, and there's also, with, with other things of, of talking of people panic buying, at the very beginning, I know it's a lot less now and everyone's adapted so much better, but, you know, at the beginning, you, there, there's a way of pickling ingredients as well so with this you probably i would say have three parts of water to one part sugar and one part vinegar and if you leave it in that for a day you're going to have some really nice pickled cucumbers that aren't too acidic to bite into um so eat, them, eat them as a, like a like a cornichon or sort of yeah exactly so, but you can do it with all sorts of things you know fennel and, and ingredients for salads that you if you put more water in it's just not gonna the the ingredients not gonna soak up as much vinegar Okay, um, and it's not going to be too acidic. So if you want to want to have one for lit for for drinking or or uh, and then one for you know actually preserving your ingredients in, then yeah, there's loads you can do with with vinegar and making sure that you're not wasting or throwing away loads of food. Perfect, perfect. Okay, so right, we've got the two um, got the two shrubs sort of infusing. Um, obviously, the idea is to turn these into tasty tasty cocktails. Yeah. Um, which one would you want to use first? I think we'll go for, should we go for a gin tonic to start? And then we yeah, can yeah. get ourselves warmed up with that. So with gin and tonic, I'm, I'm quite a puritan in the sense I quite like the tall gin and tonic glass. I'm not a massive fan of the balloons. I think yeah. they, they can look nice, but you do need a lot of ice. And I think that is the main um, bartender's trick with everything. Ice is your friend and that you need as much ice in a drink as possible to make it delicious. I find if you have less, there's more tonic and the balance is wrong. When you have a, a gin and tonic that's got little ice and too much tonic, the ice is going to dissolve and it's just going to taste like a watered down, very weak gin and tonic. Yeah, that's always been my, um, I've got these sort of oversized ice trays. Oh, perfect. Yeah. That's been my, uh, for all the neighbours and people who come, that's my, always my, like, get an oversized ice tray. Yeah, those silicon uh, are great. They're really cheap online as well. I know we can't go to the shops, so if people do want to buy stuff on certain online websites like Amazon and things, and then uh, yeah, these are cheap really chips, and you get so like eight ice cubes with you eight gin and tonics. Um, yeah, and you can put like the three plastic well. bags. The good thing with that, if you really want to show off, you can put like some of your your uh, rosemary sprigs in that, and then freeze the ice cubes, so they're actually flavoured ice cubes as well. Oh, that's a good top tip. So. Right. Short, a bit of look fancy, um, but yeah, like there, there's lots, lots of lots of ways around those those big ice cubes. Um, and the the other trick with that is to use boiling hot water. You load the ice cubes, and it sounds a bit mad, but 
if you put boiling hot water in the ice cubes, go clearer so you can make your gin and tonic look even. Oh, yeah, not clear, clear, but clearer. Is that right? Yeah, so they won't be cloudy. So with normal tap water at that temperature, there's something with the reaction that the, the boiling water goes from a quicker state. Or yeah, the yeah. State. yeah. Yeah, in interesting little tricks you can do. I like those moulds. They also do long ones as well, so you can put it in your whole gin and tonic. I know a lot of the cocktail bars do now. They have a whole long piece they chip away at, and it just goes sits beautifully in the in, in the glass. Great. Okay. So shall we show us the recipe for the gin and tonic? Yes, let's do it. I'm going to use that. So you want to get ice first. I would say in your glass. Actually, you probably want to. Push down a little bit actually, might be a little bit easier though. There you go. Excuse my hands off. Yeah, this is a drink for yourself, so hands are, hands are fine. Yeah, I'm, my, I'm, at, I'm not at my own house at the moment, so all my cocktail tools, I'm using what you would have in a kitchen anyway, so um, if you need to bash up some ice, you have a rolling pin. Um, yeah, like I said, some, some ice all the way to the top, um, and you can see I've, I've spared none. Um, yeah. That's what you want, and then you want to pour the the gin over the top. My my kind of preference is is uh, what depending on what people like. I'm I'm quite a fan of having lemon in mine. Some people yeah. like lime, um, but I would just go with a nice chunk of, of lemon. So just take the ends off because it's where all the pith is. Um, just take those ends off, and then you're going to have a bit more of the actual juice. It won't be as bitter gin and tonic. So I'm just going to go a nice little piece. Like that. I'm going to put that over the ice first. Like that, just going in. And then I've got some, I'm going to go, this one is oh, 60 mil, why not? So a little bit over a double. It's a nice uh, midday tipple. I'm going to use Mason's gin, so Yorkshire tea gin, very nice, but whatever you have at home um, is more than enough. So with that, obviously the ice first, it's just going to be chilling the glass, making sure your glass isn't warm. Um, and then we're just going to pour that over the ice and the tonic, then the lemon sorry. And then this is where our little rosemary shrub's going to come into play. Is I think we just do a little. Oh, that smells amazing! I'm just going to have a tiny little bit. We're going to pour in the bar spoon and just a little trickle, five mil. You see, I've got a little bit of the rosemary, um, rosemary stalk in there, and some fennel seeds. That's just going to alleviate a little bit of the flavour. Um, and then we're just going to put a nice little tonic over the top. If the ice is starting to dissolve, then obviously then you can just add a little bit more ice at the end, and it's going to be a really nice balance of gin, tonic, and a little bit of zin from the shrub. There we go. And obviously, if you're using whatever shrub you've put in there or what herb you're doing, I would say put that to match with the flavours. So this one's going to have a little bit more like a Mediterranean feel, I suppose. But a nice, simple gin and tonic. Lemon. Great, yeah. So if you've got a few friends over, five mils of your homemade shrub, and you've turned a very simple drink into something quite yeah, know, a little more elegant. More I think they're a bit easier to drink when they're nice and cold. Um, certainly for me, anyway. Yeah, uh, great. But yeah, I think you, you get the rosemary on the nose. You'll have then the rosemary stalk from the from the garnish here. Will just be accenting the flavour of the shrub as well. And um, obviously, if you need to give it a little stir, you can. Spoon. Yeah. yeah, that looks great. Well, we'll write down, uh, just to let people know, all these um, ingredients and recipes we'll write down in, a, in the blog piece to go with this video. Yeah. Um, that's a good, that uh, looks like a pretty refreshing drink. I might have to join you for one of those in a minute. Pretty delicious, yeah, absolutely. Um, so that, that's a really simple drink that you can make at home. Obviously, I'm sure people with the, with the sun out at the moment, everyone wants to get out in the garden and have a have a gin and tonic as early as possible. Not, you know, early, early, but I mean, you know, we're, we're all trying to finish work at three or four o'clock to enjoy some of the sun, because it's a yeah. strange time at the moment. Not quite midday, is it, Dave, so? No, but I just had to taste it to make sure. It is the bank holiday, so. Okay. But yeah, um, that's, that's, that's a nice, nice twist. And obviously, I've used a very nice gin here, just luckily, because I've got it with me. I brought it down from London, but, um, you know, this is something that can really bring up, like, you know, Escalate and level up a cop like a, a cocktail of gin and tonic when you're just using, you know, kind of easy gin that you bought in the shop. You know, if you just have, you know, there's nothing wrong with Bombay Sapphire, but if you've got a, a litre that you bought from the supermarket, then it's just going to make the taste even better. And yeah, a little bit of shrub in your G and T to lift it. 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and, that, and not too much tonic. I was finding these. This is a, a 200 ml bottle, and I've used just over, yeah, about two thirds. So you kind of get the get the idea of 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 how much of a part the ice plays in that, and the little tiny trickle of shrub just kind of adds to the volume. So you're not. I my my preferential kind of taste is I'm not a huge tonic fan. So if you yeah. have that nice balance of gin and tonic, you can taste both of them and botanicals from the gin. It, really becomes a much bigger flavour than just gin and tonic. Okay, right. Let's move on to the uh, the next drink. Yes. So this is the, your uh, cucumber shrub daiquiri. Yes, so this is for my book, available yeah. online. Um, if you guys are in London and you buy it during lockdown, let us know when you come in, show us your receipt, and we'll give you a cocktail on the house when you come in. As oh, a thank you for, for supporting us throughout the way. Um, so, yeah, this is a kind of one of the healthier drinks we were putting on here is like something simple something easy that you can make at home i think there's there's four ingredients um yeah exactly five ingredients um and it's we've got prep time on here kind of what things you need um the health elements there's loads of stuff on here but yeah and it's got a nice little picture as well to kind of go with it um but as you can see through some of the other ones there some of them a little bit more complicated some a bit more simple um some of them with fire uh but yeah th these these all have kind of things saying something that sounds very complicated we'll give you like a two-day window to make it so if you are hosting a dinner party on a friday night when you get home from work on a wednesday get the ingredients make it then it's all ready to go so you're not stressing and you know trying to do cocktails whilst cooking over a hot stove you know you know how yeah, it's, right. hosting. it's pretty tough so little things that can really make your time more valuable throughout the week or, or before a, a party, something like that, is um, yeah, it's what we kind of focused in on here as well. So it sounds complicated, but there's a lot when you work it out. If you if you're uh, making these ingredients a few days before, it's a lot less stress taken off. So. Yeah, yeah. If you can batch it all in advance, and it's just exactly. Fun. I mean, if you, if you can batch it, it's, it's that's easy. You know, you all you need then is to pour a certain amount, shake it, and then pour it out. Instead of having to measure everything finally. Oh, sorry. Okay, right. Let's make the cucumber daiquiri then. Cool, so what you want for this, so five ingredients, I've said some white rum. I've just got some run of the mill white rum here. You've got some very nice white rum there. Um, uh, fresh cucumber. Um, this one I got yesterday uh, from Waitrose in their kind of just reduced aisles. So anything you do see that you can think about, you know, using as a shrub or, or having as an ingredient, like they're, they're throwing away a lot of food at the moment because they're having to cater for so many people. So there are loads of bargains there. If you want to make a drink at home or, or pick yeah. some ingredients that would necessarily just be thrown out and not given to anyone. Um, Reducing food waste is a huge thing at the minute, isn't it? Thing, so, yeah, it's um, nice as well. But yeah, so. How much cucumber? Cucumber. So just maybe with this one, we're going to muddle a little bit in the cocktail. So I'd say a two inch piece. Whoop, like that. Um, we, we specified in here to have the skin off, but we, you know, in this time of lockdown, beggars can't be choosers. So I, I would say as well, if you're using dark rum or, or, or a slightly different coloured rum or an aged rum, it doesn't really doesn't matter if you take the skin off. Um, yeah. What you want to do is just cut it up into maybe three slices and then just down the middle. And that, that way we're going to be able to muddle some in our shaker. Yeah. I want to put that in a shaker. The best thing with cocktails, I mean, hopefully you won't make any mistakes, but if you do make mistakes, the best thing to do is to start, is to put, start with all of your kind of, um, your cheapest ingredients first. So your cucumber, your, your vinegar, your things. If you do make a mistake, you can throw it away if you put the wrong ingredient in. Always try and put your, your alcohol in last. Um, so top tip. Yeah. That's top tip, just in case. Um, we're just going to muddle this cucumber. Yeah. I'm using a rolling pin. It's actually working marvelously. So this obviously is just going to get that flavour out, the, the, the water around. That's about right, Dave. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah, it's not much of a shot. Yes, and then with our symbol, you got some symbol sugar syrup set aside. I don't think. Have you got some sugar syrup set aside? Um, you use it all in the shrub. I use it all. Doesn't matter. Um, you can make a tiny bit now if you want with a little spoonful. And yeah, I'll make that set. I'll, I'll put that in at the end. That's fine. So okay, cool. So yeah, we're going to put in fifteen ml of, of sugar syrup. Yeah. So I have that as a 
that is a tablespoon. So that's going to go in there. Can you just do it with, um, if it's not in a, sh in a syrup solution, can you just do it with caster sugar? You can do it with caster sugar. The good thing is with cucumber, because it's got water in it, you can do it with yeah. caster sugar. The only problem is, obviously, you, you don't want any bits in your drink, or you want it all to be dissolved and have a, a decent flavour. So obviously, making that sugar syrup before, just set aside, or make, make an extra 50 grams when you're making your stock syrup, and just put aside 100 ml or, or 50 ml just yeah. with your... Your cocktail. Well, I'll, whack, I'll whack in 10, 10 grams of two bar spoons of sugar. To see what yeah, 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 go for that. I've juiced some lime earlier. Um, so that's just some fresh lime juice. If you've got a Mexican elbow, I believe you may have, Andrew, um, then you can use that. That'll get more, flake, more, more juice out. Yeah, if people don't know what a Mexican elbow is, it's this. Um, along with uh, the big ice cube trays, Mexican elbow is like a really great thing to have in the house, you know, makes squeezing citrus much easier and quicker. And yeah, absolutely. And less, less wasteful as well. I mean, I've, I've juiced maybe five limes out of that and haven't got a great yield. But, you know, if you don't use all of that, then you're going to have to throw it away, you know, after a day. So if you're going to be doing it by drink you make and just by, you know, squeezing a lemon, you'll get a, 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 the right amount you need instead yeah. of having to do too much or too, too little. How much fresh lime, sorry? Fresh lime, we're going to go 25 mil. So with this, because we've got the shrub, it's got a bit of sugar in it. We're not putting equal parts of lime and sugar. We're just bringing down the sugar a little bit. And then the vinegar is going to, the vinegar shrub is going to bring up, um, bring up that sweetness. And that's also going to balance well with the, the sweetness of the white rum as well. Is that, is that roughly about one lime? 25 mil? Yeah, one lime should be about 25 mil. It depends, yeah. obviously, on your... Uh, on your limes, if you're getting really fresh limes, obviously they're going to be really thick and juicy. They're going to have probably a little bit more, but yeah, obviously you have to just make sure you measure it out or, or like I've done, just do a few of them and then you can measure it easily. But yeah, yeah. Mexican elbow works perfectly. So we've got 25 ml of lime in there. So I'm just going to... That's 15. 10, and then we're going to get our cucumber shrub. Yeah, a little pesto bottle. Um, so yeah, lovely. That should have that should have worked some flavour now because it's been there for what half an hour. Mine's mine's been overnight, so that tastes. Oh tastes yeah, I can smell. You can smell the cucumbers mixed in with it. Yeah, yeah. So we've got just seven and a half mil here. I'd put. Obviously, the good thing about this is you, if you're putting seven and a half mil in, if it's not strong enough, you can always add more. I just think you can always add. You can never take out. So always yeah. be a bit more careful about that. So seven and a half mil. Um, in there, I've got a few little um, coriander seeds I've got in with that, so it's going to bring out some more flavour of the gin as well. Yeah. So we should get a nice liquid in there now, and then that is everything apart from the rum. So rum in last, we want a nice healthy double. So the way that most cocktails, the, the most easy cocktails to make at home, the recipes are usually two pots. Um, alcohol and then one part citrus one part sweet so yeah. you can have that with you know different types of sugars or sweeteners and then different types of citrus like pink grapefruit or lime or lemon if you want to change some some bits and bobs up so yeah, it's got a lot to play with just a long simple recipe card like that of one one and two um so yeah that's kind of the, the base of that so we're going to put two parts of that so that should equal out with the cucumber and, and the strawberry everything as one and one with the sweetness and the citrus and then we're going to put a nice Two parts, a double measure of rum in there. Yeah, if you think popping up on my screen there, so you said two parts, uh, two parts of rum. Yeah, so a double measure. Yeah. Lovely. So yeah, white rum's obviously going to keep the drink nice and clean. If you do have dark yeah. rum, it doesn't matter. It'll be a little bit darker in colour, but it'll probably have a little bit more sweetness because of the kind of caramel notes you get from an aged rum. Um, obviously, if you don't have rum in the house, you can use gin or vodka. Um, it'll just be a bit more like a gimlet instead of a, a daiquiri. But you know, we we can't uh, we don't want to be just going out to get a bottle of rum from the shop. So if you do, you know, don't have that in your house, then then we can uh, make do with with other bits and bobs in in the ground. Yeah. Cool. Okay, so I've got ice and last, so if you've got everything in there, you should have the shrub, a little bit of shrub, a double measure of rum, some muddled cucumber, and then some sugar. So 15 ml of sugar and 25 ml of lime juice. 
Yeah, it's a pretty simple recipe, like not much. Not oh, much. oh, it's fine. So before you're going to go through that ordeal of shaking it, just put a spoon in and taste it. If it's too zingy, add a tiny bit more sugar. Depends on the sweetness and, and the, the sweetness of the sugar syrup and the uh, kind of this and citrus notes of the lime. That's uh, quite a good one. If you, you know, just a lot of bartenders these days just touch it on their hand if they don't want to drink off a spoon. But yeah, you should get a nice zing. Obviously, when you're going to shake it over ice, it's going to bring out more flavours and obviously give you more, much better balance because no one likes a warm cocktail. Okay. Great. So we're just going to load our shake with ice. I need to break up a few little bits. I've got... There we go. Right. So I've got some of these little shakers with a lid on. I think a lot of oh, people at home. You might have a, a Boston yeah, pin. Yeah, yeah. They've got a Boston pin and glass. This yeah. one, you just want to make sure you keep the lid on and make sure you keep on top of the, the lid so yeah. it's not all over your kitchen. And then we want to shake. So the idea with a shake, I know a lot of people like, like to do that. We, with like cocktail shaking, you want to make sure the ice is going back and forward. That's the idea of doing it. So we're actually diluting the drink. We're not just shaking it to get cold. We're actually breaking up the ice inside it as well to, to, um, to release the flavors um, and just to make sure the drink's really well-rounded and, um, and perfectly balanced. So you can do that. I, I was trying to push away. You can push up, you can go down, up and down. You just want to make sure you're getting enough force, and so that the ice is breaking up and hitting back and front. So yeah, it's not very, um, it's not a very nice sound on the Zoom. I've noticed. Uh, it's not. I can do it further away. Nice sound further away. Yeah. <laughs> That's it. Lovely. It's been a long time since I've shaken a drink. Yeah, I've done one at home for a long time. I'm trying to stay away from the booze at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite hard, though. So, obviously, if you've got a Boston tin uh, and, and the shaker like you do, Andrew, there's just a, if you can't get it open, you'll see where the glass meets on your shaker if you hold it up, just for yeah. people at home. Uh, you've already done it undone. But if you just put it back on top, just some people, sometimes they, they can't get it undone. So, if you just see inside the shaker where the glass meets, yeah, that's kind of where you want to hit. Then you use the back of your palm. You like that. Push away like that, and it will come loose. If anyone gets stuck on anyone with a cocktail that they can't open, I've got a little lid on this one. And obviously, we're just going to get a glass. If you don't want any bits in it, this one's got little holes. Obviously, with yours, you, you'll want to have a, a strainer. Yeah. Uh, and then we're just going to pour that over into our glass. Okay. Nice to the top. And then just for a little bit of garnish, we want to have a little slice of cucumber. Just make a little bit in there, and that's just going to sit on top like that. Voila. So this, this goes straight up, it doesn't go, it doesn't go over ice. Straight up, I mean, what you can do if you don't have a, a martini glass like this or, or, a, or a coupe, you can put it over ice and add some, some soda or some tonic. Um, soda water obviously better because it won't affect the flavour. It'll just be a lengthening agent, give it a little bit of fizz. Um, but tonic's obviously got high sugar content, but it's quite bitter. So that will give that kind of sweet and bitter yeah. balance. Obviously, if you've got tonic because you just made a gin and tonic, then, then that's there um, to be used. Oh, it's, it's a beautiful colour, isn't it? The green. Very nice, yeah. Yeah, this is mine. Oh, lovely. Mm. Cheers. Oh, great. Delicious, though. Nice and refreshing. And uh, something that you probably drink far too many of in the nice sunshine at the moment. Yeah, I was a bit worried because I didn't have the gum. I just used uh, two bar spoons of caster sugar. Yeah, I mean, that's that's my, it's obviously worked out really well there as well so I just feel that with, with if you're going to be making a lot of them 
you don't want to be having little bits of sugar in your, your shake and you want to do a sugar syrup, that's probably the best one. But yeah, it, it can work very easy as you've just, just shown. More accurate, isn't it, to create a one-to-one -one syrup? Yeah, you, yeah. Know, you, don't to, you don't want to have a sweet cucumber drink, you want to have it really perfectly balanced. Um, but obviously that, that drink can be made in various different ways, like you said, long, short, you know, over ice, um, sub it out for tequila and you've got a margarita, you know, it's lots of very versatile, that kind of base of, of flavour. You've got, if you want to do a margarita with tequila, if you have some jalapeno pickles in your, yeah. um, in your fridge, you can use a bit of the liquid as that instead of a shrub. We pointed that out in our book a little bit here. We just said, if you don't, if you don't have a shrub or you don't have any greens, but you do have some gherkins or jalapenos, use the pickle from that because that's quite sweet. Yeah. It's a yeah. pickle. Real DIY cocktails, that. Yeah, but that like a that little bit of acidity in the drink really lifts it, doesn't it? It's, it's, um, it's like a zing. Yeah, it's not unpleasant. You get the vinegar, you taste it, and you can work out what that flavour is, but it's not unpleasant. It's a nice, like I said, booster to the flavour in the drink. Yeah, but like I said, if you go into most bars now around the country, I would say you would normally see at least one drink with some sort of shrub in there. Yeah, shrubs and, uh, and peaches are quite quite popular at the moment. You know, people making, infusing alcohol with, you know, like with, with flavours, with, with, uh, with herbs and stuff as well, and just adding a lot more ingredients. So, you know, it just, just brings up that, that kind of level of innovation a little bit more than just adding a, an already bottled product. Yeah. So if people are looking to like pimp up their sort of virtual happy hour or um, house party for Saturday night or whatever you're doing, um, I could definitely recommend the, um, I didn't get to make the gin and tonic, but I can definitely recommend the cucumber daiquiri. And uh, yeah, I think it's quite nice. You walk into your fridge and you've got a few homemade ingredients. Um, yeah, exactly. Or, or, or like we said, if it's if they're going up on on the kitchen counter or on the windowsill with all your, you know, as if people are growing their own veg and plants and stuff, so that it looks quite nice. It's a little tip, talking point. Just whack a label on it and makes you look semi-professional. People uh, yeah. do come round eventually once lockdown's done. Yeah, well, thank you, Dave. There's some great top tips there. <laughs> Good recipes and yeah, um, recipes. yeah I'll, I'll get I'll, I'll get all this written up in the in the blog to go with this video as well. Sure. Um, thank you for giving me your time. Like, I can really appreciate right. that. And um, yeah. yeah, wishing you the very best for the bank holiday weekend. Yeah, to, to the bars getting back open. That's that's the main thing. Cheers. Yeah, not to, yeah, let's yeah, let's go for a drink at Shrub and Shutter mm. once the bars back open. Absolutely, your pleasure. Just a quick quick question, Dave. Have you um, finger in the air stuff? But in your mind, when do you think? When do you think the bars may or may not be open? I'm 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 a, I'm a real optimist about these sort of things, but I've heard a lot of things saying the end of August, which uh, I don't. I, I'm I'm just I'm hoping the end of August means like the social distancing is kind of already passed by then. I'm, I'm all for uh, the well-being of, of everyone, um, more than the well-being of bars, to be, to be honest. I, I want everyone to get over this first. So if it does mean that social distancing and just having 10 tables in our restaurant instead of 20, then, yeah, we'd love to just be back open. We've got a lot of people that want to be earning their full amount of wage and, and, and be doing what they love. Um, and same here, you know, we want to be back in the bars and, um, you know, everyone's got withdrawal symptoms from pubs and cocktail bars and restaurants. Um, and yeah, we, I, I think September will probably have, you know, the green light for everyone. Yeah. It'll be a good celebration. If it is the end of August, then we've got a bank holiday and everyone can basically take a few days off and let loose, which will be good. For, I mean, the industry needs it, to be fair. We need everyone to be out, coming out of the, you know, the trap very ready to spend some well-earned cash, really. Yeah, yeah, well, fingers crossed. I think this... Yeah, um... absolutely. I mean, the government have been great for us as a small small business but um, for the bigger business I'm, I'm a little bit more cautious of what the government are taking a bit of time over which isn't you know entirely fair but it's a, it's a it is a crisis that everyone's going through so we, we're doing Deliveroo and, and trying to keep afloat but it's 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 only a, a small amount in comparison to what we are used to making obviously there's no wage costs for the furlough but it's with the chefs are, are trying to survive as much as possible being an independent business within ours they're they're trying to do delivery. So yeah, they were only there for two weeks before this all happened as well. So it's a really unfortunate time for them to start their new residency and their food was amazing. So we're ready for them to get, get, get straight back on it. 
Yeah, so um, but for people people living in London, if you want to get a drink from Shubber and Shutter, you can get them from Deliveroo. Yes, or give us an email and we'll see if we can do a, a drop off or send it via post as well. Because um, the delivery is about two, two or three mile radius. So South London, obviously, you've got a, a better chance. But if, if there's more demand, we'll see if we can get onto a, a booze platform. Okay, cool. But there are some Good. great ones as well. But yeah, awesome. Um, really appreciate your time and uh, <laughs> have a nice bank holiday weekend. Yeah, you too. Have a good one. And I'm sure I'll speak to you very soon. Take care. Yeah, if you have any more questions, give me a shout. Nice one. Bye. Bye.